Okay, folks, here we have um, just some specific examples of AI in banking. Uh, just uh, goes over several different cases, some of cosmic significance, others just really quite uh, quite neat, like looking for leaks. Um, all right, let's go. Okay, here is just sort of a light relief. It's the um, number of global transactions. Uh, Visa does 165. 0.3 billion transactions in 2018, and um, we have here the top six with Discover down, um, well, almost a factor of 50 smaller, showing that the big players are pretty important. And of course, we expected MasterCard and Visa. I did not know that the Chinese Union Pay was um, right up there with these uh, major systems. I actually didn't even know Visa was bigger than MasterCard. So, but it's a, almost twice as much as MasterCard. Here we have a collage of um, organization companies uh, participating in the trading ecosystem. We have at the top the brokerages like the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, and companies like uh, Fidelity, E-Trade, Vanguard, IU uh, uses Vanguard for its retirement thing, so these through Fidelity. Morgan Stanley, uh, Golden Sachs, JP Morgan, Merrill Lynch, and so on. These are all um, well-known players in the, in the stock market ecosystem. Charles Schwab is a pioneer who's been um, somewhat overtaken by Robin Hood as the leader of, the, as the leader of change. In the middle here, Pivotus, we have uh, companies that are changing their focus. Remember, we have sort of identified that um, with uh, wealth management automated being only 1% of the total at the moment, there's lots and lots of opportunity for better ecosystems and digitization of this whole process. And, and you already see that those changes in the current stock market uh, over the past uh, Many years, it's got much easier to trade, much cheaper to trade, and you have a wealth of information you never used to have. So here we have, so these are the exchange, New York Stock Exchange. Um, and here we have the actual infrastructure, the networks and things which are, are needed, the information systems, Bloomberg, Yahoo Finance. And I don't, yes, I don't know some of the, most of these I don't know. But anyway, this is a, a set of uh, three major players, the pl platforms, the exchanges where the money and the shares change hands, and then we have the overall infrastructure, which uh, enables it. So that's a reasonably interesting collage. All right, so here is a really nifty, slightly trivial application. It's a robot, which one that which actually has ability to count coins, because there still are coins. And um, this company called Sh Sparebank is um, going to develop robotics, which interact with the coins and count them in a reliable fashion. And we know counting coins and also counting dollars, I mean, um, paper money is pretty boring, and uh, I'm always quite impressed when these people f flick through money very quickly. I can't do that, so that's impressive. But anyway, a robot will probably do even better because this is a pretty well-defined um, operation. All right, we already pointed out in an earlier slide that insurance, this was in the fintech, uh, module is a huge area. Here we have this in another illustration of what I pointed out. This was the golden time to get started. And there was a the amount of funding which was actually going to a higher series at this stage has really plummeted in this whole fintech area. And this is the subset called InsureTech. Um, and again, InsureTech has three, three things. And um, front office, middle office, and back office. But the front office is the most important, and they estimate um, $168 billion by 2030 associated with um, 
The front office for InsurTech 99 for the middle and 125 for the back. Uh, for general banking, their back was even was the lead, was much lower than the first two. Um, and then we can talk about customer service, being able to actually do a digital mortgage and things like that. I mean, the equivalent of a digital contract rather for insurance, although mortgage has a lot of insurance issues attached to it, title. And we want to be able to personalize policies, uh, get some optimized AI to tell you who's the best risk and give people who really are good risks a better deal. Uh, and unfortunately, if we have a problem, we need claims management and a variety of things from fraud, looking at fraudulent claims and just uh, processing correct claims uh, speedily. And our chatbots come in yet again. And um, we also have this personalization, the recommender engines, which are both uh, find out, tell the find out a lot about the customer to see what uh, how much the insurance uh, insurance company should trust them, and also what's good for that customer. All right, and so here we have this um, discussion of AI and insurance with these three areas, with these three values. And um, with different things, we got fraud again, as we had before. We had the KYC AML before, and related to KYC AML is compliance. Uh, we have personalization of recommender and so the chat box and the claims area. And in the back end, we can uh, do lots of document stuff. We can uh, look at the claims and uh, assess the risk. And here are some examples of AI insurance. Um, here we have Lemonade, which has got a nice name. And it just got a mere $300 million investment. And it has a couple of chatbots to buy the, for buying and claims on homeowners and renters. And then we have Root, which is based on car insurance. But we know there's lots of terrifying applications that just sit inside your smartphone count the number of times you do heartbreaking and things like that. And uh, this, so there's quite a lot of clear value in doing some informed car insurance decisions. I told you, they like heartbreaking. All right, now we have, um, well, also, of course, they can check whether you're using your phone, which would uh, be a bad, make you more risky, because that's a sure way to have an accident. Uh, here we have a SMB, small and medium-sized business insurance company, which claims pays claims very quickly and has an accelerated policy uh, processing. And it, all this AI is basically to make all these uh, claims and buying your insurance policy much easier than normal. Plank, a nice, good physics name, and it's a business-to-business. -business. And it links, uh, it basically <coughs> accesses all sorts of possible data, um, including maps and things like that, and social media. And it finds out about a business and gives creates insights, which then the insurance company can use to uh, price policies. Uh, tractable <coughs> is car insurance which has an AI for accident and disaster recovery. It uh, speeds up claims management by uh, automating the process, uh, by doing a review of the uh, repair estimates to see uh, if the repairs are really reasonable and at reasonably priced. And um, it also can process pictures to see uh, how, how much the AI repair should cost. So these are all solid, or not terribly revolutionary applications of AI. Uh, here we have um, chatbots, my least favorite topic. Uh, but uh, they're, they're going to make a huge amount of money for people, almost $6 billion by 2025. And we can see here over here what it's going to do. And it's probably best to look at advanced, because that tells you the nifty things it does. I understand user intent and mood. Maintain the context of the conversation. That in the, in an LSTM is the called attention, and um, adjust responses appropriately. 
integrate with your overall system and embed in, embed in the process as an automatic feature. And the bot can talk to other bots and to humans. And they can also be trained in an advanced fashion. And I say we have a scale of deployment, the bots to the bots to the bots to the humans. And maybe there are no humans left. We have lots of use cases and lots of languages it can speak. Um, the users can get lots of information. They have a, they believe the bot is actually pretty human and speaks well. And it's all 24 by 7 because we know bots don't go to sleep. Um, the end users largely satisfied because this bot is pretty intelligent and large cost cuts because of that. And um, and also the customer's happy, so the customer's retained and doesn't go off to for another insurance company. Banks and technology. These are just points out that J.P. Morgan Chase, a well-known bank. Uh, which actually owns um, most of the, a lot of the large um, banks in Bloomington. And um, they have 50, over 50 billion digital customers, up 6%. Uh, and um, you know, two thirds of those customers use mobile banking, they have the cell phone. And that's up 12%. And it was, um, did well in 2019. And it actually also spent $11.4 billion on technology. Look at these numbers. And Bank of America spent $10 billion and Wells Fargo $9 billion. Wow, and of course they got more expenses they had to pay. And that probably reduces your, your interest rate on your savings accounts and things like that. And of course this fellow, Jamie, who was Demon, who was a very famous CEO, well thought of in, in, in Wall Street. We have AI, clouds, digital, and payments. Well, those are all good things to be mixing together. And this tells you the growth of the mobile banking. We had a similar graph earlier, and it's growing faster for Chase than it is for Wells Fargo. Um, I always loved Wells Fargo because it had a stagecoach. But when I was in California and young, I never banked there because I didn't think a stagecoach was serious. So I always used Bank of America, which was the other major branch where I, in Berkeley where I was in California. All right, that's an aside. And now we come to another um, few examples. Here we have the Royal Bank of Canada filing patents. And those patents, of course, tell us what types of things they can do. And we use a recurrent neural net um, to um, basically track purchasing data. This is a recommender engine. And um, trying to sort of understand the transactions, the time series of patient, oh, sorry, of customer data and um, to predict future, future activities by the customer, which would allow them to prepare to, to um, serve the customer better and unfortunately probably to sell all this information to people who want to spend my money and use it to make even better suggestions as to how I should spend my money. Um, and of course, uh, he makes this, people tell, tell the, the world what they do just by what they search for and what they do on social media. And so this uh, this type of data is enormously useful for everybody, including banks. Um, and financial management tools which don't actually tell you much, they just count numbers are no longer quite as important. They were 10 years ago pretty important. And. Uh, here is an interesting example. It's the past. AI is solving the past. The past is paper. And so here we have a, an insure tech which has um, uh, raised 30 million uh, in a Series A. That's quite good for the first round. Series A is their first. I think I think Series A is your first round. 
Let me show second round. Um, anyway, it's very near the beginning and 30 million is not a bad amount of money at that stage. Um, it's got Omnias and they basically process existing paper data. And they're moving from uh, Germany into the US. And um, of course, we hope that the demand for this product should go down. We want to move less written stuff. And here is a value of billions for life and non-life written insurance premiums. It's um, uh, 1,500 billion in the US, China. Almost 600, 600 billion. So that's quite a lot of money. So there's a lot of money, even if this money is presumably going to go down. We're not going to have as many. Remember, we have some other technology which is making all these insurance premiums easier to get by totally automating it and making it entirely digital. We have digital mortgages, digital insurance. So this is. This is just taking care of the past. They better have a new product in about five years. There is an very amazing idea, Leakbot, which is uh, water damage. And um, insurance in the US and UK spent $16 billion a year on leaks. And so if you have a clever uh, you know, uh, edge device, an IoT, this is the edge. Uh, which detects water leaks. It measures the temperature which will drop when a leak occurs, because it um, draws in colder water from outside the home. And uh, you just measure this and therefore get a, a, a indication of leak. So this shows this AI is pretty pervasive. Leak detection, wow, wouldn't have guessed that one. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of this particular module of examples, which you saw went from the uh, sublime of Visa doing uh, whatever it was, uh, 1,600 billion transactions a, a year to detecting leaks.